hear me? Uh, our discussion today is really based on vast experience in advising young companies in the various stages of growth. And one of the main elements of growth is the element of fundraising. I would like to take you for a moment on a trip, on a time, on a time machine that basically shows the different stages of the life cycle of a startup. Um, it's, it's a bit difficult to see the different points, but they represent significant milestone in the life cycle of a typical startup. In my years advising startups, I found out that it doesn't matter which vertical the startup is coming from, whether it's automotive or enterprise software or even bio. The, I mean, the timetable you can see, the X asics is the timeline and the Y asics is the cash flow. So usually any startup will go through the various stages of seed round and then initial product R&D and then first paying customer or POC and then round A, etc. And it's vital to understand this life cycle because a lot is determined through the understanding of the different stages of the life cycle. We'll get back to it in a late, at a later stage, but I think it's important to begin with it. By the way, all the presentations, all the slides will be circulated later on, so you don't need to take pictures. But it, it is vital to understand the different stages and basically, just as, a, as an introduction, in order to move from one milestone to the other, you need money. And then the issue of fundraising begin to be relevant. The structure of our short discussion today will be based on questions. I think one of the most important process, and if you go back to ancient Greek, ancient Greece, I think asking questions and having a discussion on key issues is an important factor in success and building a comprehensive, being able to do the best storytelling of your startup. And you can't raise money unless you have a good story and you know how to tell it. And in order to tell the story in an appealing way, you basically have to ask yourself these four, four and a half basic questions and we will of course break them down into subsection and try and uh, intrigue you and encourage you to ask yourself those questions. And through the answers, you, we basically build the story, we build the narrative. We build the narrative of the startup and of the fundraising process. So with your permission, let's begin with the first question, which is, of course, very material. What? Um, I feel a bit uh, locked here. <laughs> um, I mean, there are, there are several questions that relate to the what component. We will name now six or seven. The first three are, I think, very intuitive and very basic. And everyone who think about starting a business or a startup will probably ask, him, ask himself those questions even without our commenting on this. The first question is, what is the challenge or pain or need I'm trying to address? I remember that 15 or 20 years ago, there was a famous uh, half joke that Israelis are world experts in finding solutions to problems that do not exist. So I think we have moved from, from, this, uh, from this situation, but still, I think the first basic question is what is the need or what is the pain and challenge I'm going to address? Second question, what is the product or solution or service I'm going to offer? And the third one, is what is my business model? How am I going to make money from this idea? Now, just one comment about the business model. Um, there are today 
companies that kind of postpone the question of a business model. For example, B2C companies. But in fact, there is a business model. If we talk, take a company like Waze, who didn't have or didn't generate revenue, um, all these mobility apps that we see today, like Move It, right now they are just basically collecting users. So it seems like they don't have a business model, but in fact they have a business model because they are building a network of users and then they postpone the question of how to monetize this. But this is a key question to be asking. What is the business model and how I'm going to make money for my wonderful idea? The next question is, since we are not acting in a vacuum or in an empty space, is what is the current solution or what currently the market is doing about this pain? And then a very, very important question that most, in, most investors and VC funds in Israel and around the world are looking to see is what am I going to do differently? Or if you like, what is my competitive advantage? Or if you like, what is my unfair advantage? And to give you a feel about unfair or competitive advantage, unfair of course, as a, it's not un really unfair, um, when we are asking ourselves this question is, for example, let's take a, a, comp a, a pain or a situation in which now the solution is very labor intensive. You are employing, companies around the world are employing many people in order to perform this function. And we are coming with an automated solution, with a software um, that is basically doing it with almost without manpower, just QA, just almost reducing the manpower, then this is our competitive advantage. We have transformed something which is labor intensive to something which is basically almost no labor at all. So this is a competitive advantage. And since the first question, the what, is basically the essence of our business, let's spend some more, some more time on it. And let's play a little bit with the question of the business model, which is very interesting. One of the questions, again, a different set of questions is, okay, I formed a startup, I have a pain and I have some answer to it. How exactly am I going to sell it? Is it going to be a software as a service, basically a service that I'm deploying to the market, a SaaS model? Is it a classic license, like a DSK on an app? Am I selling hardware? Do I need to sell hardware? Am I in the freemium model, which is basically giving access for free and then selling upgrades for additional cash? So these are all questions I need to ask myself and be very clear about it when I'm coming to my investor pitch and I'm going to raise money. Because this is the questions that they will seek to find answers to. And I think my recommendation is to come with the answers prepared, to answer the questions without them being asked. S through your presentation or your, or your investor pitch. So let's say, let's take for a minute, we are in a SaaS model. It's also important to come to the, to the investors, to the fundraising round, with some idea about the metrics we are going to use in order to measure our progress. Investors would want to see exactly what are the key performance indicators, the KPIs I'm going to track closely when I'm looking at the business. It's, you know, the classic KPIs of profit and revenue are not necessarily relevant in the prelim preliminary stages. So we still need something to be able to track and not just saying, fine, we, are, we know we are going to lose money for many years, so we're just going to flow with it. So. SaaS world, for, the SaaS world, for example, has some famous uh, KPIs methodologies like monthly recurring revenue. In a SaaS model, we are in a recurring revenue model in which every, every month or every year, the client needs to pay in order to get the service, the software as a service. So we have the M MRR, 
the monthly recurring revenue. We have the ARR, the annual recurring revenue. And then we have the CAC, the customer acquisition cost, and the LTV, the lifetime value. Basically, how much a client is worth for, to me. Usually, VC funds are following closely those KPIs, and especially the ratio between the LTV and the CAC, which basically represent my operational profit, the operational profit I'm producing on one client. So the fact, in order to conclude this, what's the pain? What's the product? What's my business model? How am I going to measure it and track my development? What is my competitive advantage? These are all questions you really, really need to come prepared with, an answers, with, with answers when you are going to sit with investors, even if the meeting is at a very preliminary stage. My approach is to leave surprises for birthday. Don't leave them to the investor's pitch. And now with your permission, I would like to share a video that touches a little bit about the issue of fundraising rounds. Cannot locate the internet server. This is okay. I actually did come prepared. I was here half an hour ago and it was working, but now it doesn't. So that can happen in life as well. Now to press the button? Yes, great, thanks. Richard, one it's potential issue, our hosting fees could become a challenge as we scale. It's a right, but we can offset a lot of that once we get a few customers and start a subscription revenue model. What? So, uh, revenue? No, 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 no revenue. I'll call you back. What? Why would you go after revenue? Because we, to make money? No. If you show revenue, people will ask how much and it will never be enough. The company that was the 100x or the 1000x or becomes the 2x dog. But if you have no revenue, you can say you're pre-revenue. You're a potential pure play. It's not about how much you earn. It's about what you're worth. And who's worth the most? Companies that lose money. Pinterest, Snapchat, no revenue. Amazon has lost money every fucking quarter for the last 20 fucking years, and that Bezos motherfucker is the king. The king. There's no revenue. No one wants to see revenue. Go. Go. Oh, uh, I, ju I just thought that... Mainly the goal of companies is to make money. Yeah, no, 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 that's not how it works. I don't want to make a little bit of money every day. I want to make a fuck ton of money all at once. ROI. ROI. You know what that stands for? Uh, return on Return internet. on investment. Nope. Radio on internet. Okay, so I think we kind of touched on the what question, and uh, I think it's no less important when you are embarking on this journey, and in, it is a difficult journey, definitely, to, to form a, a successful startup, is who are your partners? Um, my late mother used to tell me, don't marry anyone you think you can't divorce. So saying this, I'm, by the way, happily married for 20 years, so no need for that. But I think it is important because in many ways, your partners, the people who are basically going through this journey with you, uh, it's, it's extremely important, first of all, to choose them and to pick, them, to pick the right one. I can't help with this, but I can definitely tell you that it's important to have a very properly drafted, carefully drafted founders agreement. The road is tough, and in many cases, 
we saw them, that we saw that, that the entrepreneurs that are beginning this journey together are not always ending it together. And there are mechanisms that can ease parting from a, from a founder or from a partner when it doesn't work out well. And it's extremely important to draft it. Um, so basically my advice is not to take it too lightly and say, we are good friends, we get along together, we serve in the same unit in the army, or we go back from high school together, is to sit carefully with a good lawyer and, and carefully draft any terms and agreement between you. Another question regarding the who relates to the investor. The inv choosing an investor, especially one that is investing in an, at an early stage, is also a kind of marriage between two parties. And also there, we believe it's worth to take the time and look carefully through the investor's agreement. We'll get, to the how, we'll get to the investor's agreement and the investor mechanism at our last question, which is the how question. But again, it's important to keep in mind, it's important to choose the partners in a proper way. The next question we are going to address is when and where. Now I want you to go back for a minute to the life cycle a startup life cycle slide we began with. Many of the timetable and the order of events is determined by the market. You can't go to round A if you don't have an MVP, a minimum viable product. You can't move to round B if you don't have global presence. The market is dictating a certain way of, of basically managing and do the fundraising. There are milestones the company needs to go. But here, when we talk about when and where, we talk about something which begins a bit before the life cycle startup slide begins. There are two entrepreneurs that are sitting together. They define the pain, they define the product, they define the market, they define its size, they even have a founder's agreement drafted between them. When is the right moment to form a company that will incorporate this business. On one hand, you don't want to spend too much money on lawyers and accountants, and you are right. On the other hand, you want to do it right. And there is an exposure, and we see it very frequently, that entrepreneurs are pushing away the establishment of the corporation, actually until they are reaching the seed, or even sometimes preliminary round A uh, round. And what's happening in this case is that the company already has a value. And if they are forming the company when the IP already has a value, tax authorities around the world are claiming that an IP was transferred from the entrepreneurs to the company. So don't wait with it too much. I'm th I see that my time is almost up, so I'll move quickly to the next question, which is the where. Closely, one last, one last uh, uh, sentence I want to say about the where. Offshores are off the table. Do me a favor, don't, put, don't park your IP in an offshore. This is an absolute turn off to all startups. Um, I'll, I have two more minutes. Okay, great. Um, very briefly about the how. First of all, Remember, we talked about who is your investors, who is your investor. There are, there is another, there are different possibility to fund your company. One is, at least in Israel, one of them is the IIA, the Innovation, Israel, the Israel Innovation Authority. This money is relatively cheap because it's not diluting the founders. There is no issuance of shares, but it comes with a price tag, especially in exits. You have VCs, like our crowd, and others that, again, will want on one hand the money and will also want a seat at the board. Again, here it's extremely, extremely important to understand the legal terminology. I'm gonna get 
to this slide for a minute, just to, you see all kinds of legal buzzwords. And sometimes there is a tendency, which is a mistake, to leave it to the lawyers, to, to draft and to fight with the VCs, to fight, I mean, of course, not, not in real life, not with fists, uh, about those uh, conditions. There is a best practice in the market. You need to make sure you understand this. It's, come, it's going back to, to marriage and divorce. Extremely important to understand them. One last point. Sometimes you need the money before you reached the milestones that enables you to go to an official round A. We also have a means called a bridge, which is usually a convertible loan agreement, a CLA, or a safe agreement which usually en enables you to get some money to bring you to the next fundraising rounds. Also there, it is important to understand and to bear in mind. We try to, I try to highlight a number of questions, the most important question in my view, that it's important to discuss when going to fundraising rounds. So we ask the questions, we'll be happy to help you find the answers, and lots of luck in your wonderful journey. Thank you very much. Thank you.